What is up, guys? Welcome to Let's Play Dragon Quest Heroes! Alright, I am so excited about this. I've been planning this and prepping for this for about a year now. I am so excited to be doing a Dragon Quest game that's actually in a genre that I can Let's Play. Um, this is going to be a long game, very in-depth. But it's one of the best uh, licensed Muso games out there, and I'll be going into why as we go forward. So, first thing we start a new game is we have to select a save file, just like in any other Dragon Quest game. Uh, we get to name our protagonist. I'm going to be choosing my primary character as the female protagonist, Aurora, instead of the male protagonist, Lucius. Uh, we have to go over some of the controls really quick. I'm just going to get my settings. All the default settings should be fine. R2 for dodge is fine. Uh, we're going to be using the English dub for this game because it's fantastic. Um, and then there's two different control schemes, quick and slick. Um, and you definitely want to go with the slick controls. The difference is in combat with uh, quick controls, you can just hold down one button and the game will auto combo for you. But uh, if you have slick controls, the combat is much, much more satisfying because all of, you, all of your inputs are manual and direct, so we'll be going over that when I actually get to combat. So let's watch the opening cutscene here and see the awesome visuals. This is the PS4 version of the game uh, in English, the only English version of the game. I think it's also on PC, and there's a Switch version of Dragon Quest 1 and 2 bundled together coming out soon. Uh, but because I'm playing in, in, in English, there's really the only reason why I'm going for the PS4 version. Otherwise, I could have just done the Japanese PS3 version, which would have been fine. Which stood at the center of that world, the most important festival of the year was just beginning. And the streets resounded with the happy cries of man and monster alike. How cute. Look at this nice little town with monsters and humans getting around getting along together. Childish of course, why are they called the monsters if they've always one. lived peacefully with humans? All these iconic Dragon Quest monsters illustrated by Akira Toriyama we've seen all throughout the years in glorious HD. It's wonderful. And so it begins. They all have been affected. What? Even Helix, you mean? <sighs> Helix! Oh, thank goodness. He looks like he's okay. But the castle may not be. Our comrades are under attack. We must act now, lest they suffer for our complacency. Listen carefully. I will circle around to the rear of the castle and assess the situation. You, meanwhile, will approach from the you front... You want to follow some long-winded plan? Thanks, uh. but no thanks. The royal guards, so let's guard some royals. We need to find King Doric right now. Huh? Wait! <sighs> Headstrong fool. Does she mean to fight them all off on her own? Just a little side note, that was the Dragon Quest II battle theme that was just playing there, and this is the Dragon Quest 3 battle theme playing here. So they reused all the music from across the series, and it's wonderful. Mm, what is the meaning of this? Your Majesty. Ah, there you are, my 
my brave young bodyguards. Our monster friends have gone quite mad. The little devils all turned on me at once. Both the castle and the town have been overrun. Mm. We must devise a strategy without delay. Mm. Mm. Uh, right. You and I must stand fast while His Majesty and Helix fall back toward the throne. The task of defending the throne room will be ours. When the enemy draw near, one of us will meet their advance and launch a counter-offensive. The other will hold position and protect King Doric from any who make it through the onslaught. But even if we do defeat the enemy before us, we cannot afford to let our guard drop. If my assessment of the situation is correct, they will divide their forces into several groups and attack in waves. Each time they do so, one of us must guard His Majesty while the other renews the onslaught. By alternating our roles, we shall be able to conserve energy and keep the enemy at bay indefinitely. Really? Only... He's still talking. Thanks for the master plan, but if it's all the same to you, I'm going to go and batter those monsters before they get to the king. Why are you... To rush in without a sound strategy is pure folly. <laughs> you are most kind, but I have no need of your protection. Nay, let we three stand and fight side by side. Now to arms, friends. All right, the king's a badass too. All right, so those of you who are following along may have noticed that I... This game has a very robust tutorial, but I took the liberty of editing that out because it takes a long time. It kind of talks down to you and there wouldn't be much commentary to be had there. So I'm just going to cover all the basics with you guys right here in the first real combat section. So like I said, the, the tutorial is very robust. So if you're playing along, you should have a very familiar understanding of the gameplay mechanics already by now. But I just want to cover everything really quick here. So uh, this is a Musou game through and through. But uh, it does have a lot of RPG elements that tie it into the Dragon Quest series very well. So don't really think of it as an action RPG. Think about it as a Musou game. But there's a lot of things, especially later on in the game, that we can make parallels to and say that it does have a lot more in common with an action RPG than uh, most other Musou games. So we have our regular, uh, you know, mash square to attack um, nonsense. And then you can interrupt the uh, square combo with a triangle attack to break your combo and do a little finisher at any point in time. So just like the other Musou games I've played this year, um, the actual combat sandbox itself is pretty shallow, but um, it's there's a lot of other gameplay dynamics that make the combat sandbox in this game really a lot of fun. Um, and part of it is the abilities that you can cast. You can hold down R1 or RR2, depending on which button you have your uh, dodge binded to. And you can cast a spell, and the spells are usually unique abilities that are tied to each character, um, or they are famous spells from throughout the Dragon Quest series. Wow, King Doric is pretty badass there. So you saw, <laughs> you saw at the very beginning there. Also, the game likes it when we finish off the final enemy, so that's why he's not able to kill the skeleton right here. So we're gonna do that for him. We we'll get this nice cool animation every time we finish an enemy off like that. Now you saw at the very beginning I casted Cold Fission, which. Uh, created an AoE attack which dispersed and destroyed a lot of enemies that were directly in front of me. So that's pretty As nice. I'm going to be going over the combat some more really soon here. Like I said, this is going to be a long game. Uh, the first run, as you saw at the very beginning, was 24 hours long. But thankfully, I'm not worried about it because I'm, I'm sure this run is going to be much faster already. And I have a lot to say, so it'll be fine. Well, nothing short to say in terms of commentary. So the reason why I picked Aurora instead of Lucius, I like both their characters. I'll talk about their characters personality-wise a little bit later. But the main reason why I picked Aurora was because of a couple of gameplay reasons. They have some minor stat differences, but they behave exactly the same. Um, their skill trees are slightly different as, in terms of some unique abilities you can unlock for them. Um, and then for plot reasons, depending on depending on which uh, character you pick will impact a particular plot line later on. And I feel like it just works better when you're playing as Aurora uh, to have that particular choice happen the way it does. And you guys who have played the game know what I'm talking about. Those of you that haven't, we'll find out later. So uh, when, when you hit triangle as the first hit in your combo, you'll do a nice little lunge forward. You can hit uh, square up to four times to do a combo. You can hit square and then triangle to launch an enemy up into the air, which can be followed up by an aerial attack we can unlock later on. You can hit uh, square and then square twice and then triangle like I did just there to do an overhead swing, which is pretty powerful. And then finally, you can hit square three times and then hit triangle once to do a blizzard slash, which is really powerful 
um, deals with a lot of has a big AOE, deals with a lot of enemies, and it can be uh, powered up later on in the game. So I'm definitely going to be using that a lot, but hopefully not abusively to the point where you guys are sick of hearing Blizzard Slash, Blizzard Slash, like every two seconds. Um, uh, Lucius has an identical one called uh, Searing Slash, which is exactly the same. And instead of Cold Fission, he has uh, Flame Slash. So, um, or oh, I'm sorry, Inferno Slash. Flame Slash is another ability later on. So uh, I'm going to be mixing up these combos as often as I can so the gameplay does not look repetitive. Also, you're going to be seeing me use the dodge mechanic quite a bit to move around. It doesn't increase your speed all that much, but it is really nice uh, to uh, sort of cancel out the animation after you've done Blizzard Slash so you can keep moving. Um, and it does allow you to dodge out of the way of enemy spells and projectiles, which would be a lot more common as we go through the game. Um, so our objective right here is to protect Helix the Heal Slime from being killed, which is pretty easy. There's not that many big enemies in this encounter, but the game has a lot of protect the VIP type objectives like that. So we're going to be doing that quite a bit, unfortunately. And they will get harder as the game goes on. Um, these type of missions are the bane of my existence, but at least at least it goes to show you that not every single mission is uh, knock all the enemies down until there aren't any left. Although there are some missions that are like that, the gameplay again is a little bit more varied than just that. Man, these portraits of the the hand drawn portraits by Akira Toriyama for all these characters are just fantastic. All the characters we're going to be seeing in this video are new characters, exclusive for Dragon Quest Heroes. But we will be getting some classic Dragon Quest characters very soon, but I won't spoil anything for you guys that are not already familiar with who we're going to get. Just as I thought. I feared they might be holding such a creature in reserve. Dragon or not, there's only one thing we can do. Come on then. Let's give it the hiding of its life. Oh no, it's a green dragon. I've got PTSD from Dragon Quest 2 from you guys. Oh no. Alright, time for a boss battle against the Green Dragon. So the Green Dragon has a lot of other regular enemies alongside him, but those will be easily blown away by our AoE attacks. So uh, you can press in R3 to lock onto enemies, uh, similar to how we could lock onto bosses in Fate Stella or in um, Berserk and the Band of the Hawk. But you don't necessarily auto lock onto regular enemies, but um, most important enemies like uh, bosses and things like that you can lock onto. So that's important. Um, the gameplay is not dependent on your ability to lock on, but the fact that you can for bosses is, is pretty important, mainly just to keep your camera focused on it and all of your slashes directed at it. Nice thing about Helix being a heal slime is the fact that, well, he heals us. Who would have thought? So we took a really nasty hit there from the um, Green Dragon, and luckily he healed us. So the Green Dragon actually has two weak points. You'll see the amount of damage we deal on screen, and the uh, the style of the hit indicator will change if we deal a, a more critical hit. So if we hit him in the, in the torso and the legs, it deals negligible damage. But if we hit him in the head or the tail, it'll deal uh, a much, much larger damage. So... We uh, managed to st uh, stagger him here, which means we can just go all out. I'm going to keep using Blizzard Slash on his face here. I think there might they might actually be weak to ice, although I don't know that there's an elemental affinity really with enemies in this game. Um, so that is nice, though. Now he's going to use a Berserk attack there where he starts chomping away at us. He has that Flamethrower attack, which is pretty dangerous. He has a Claw Swipe, and he has a Tail Swing, so pretty much standard attacks for a dragon. But if we keep hitting him in the head... Um, that's his weak point. We can stagger him pretty easily. So that was actually a really quick fight against the green dragon. I, stu I struggled against that fight in the first time through the game. Don't worry, green dragons will be a lot harder later in the game. This is still technically the tutorial level, so it makes sense why they didn't um, give you a really powerful one. Money is picked up automatically from enemies, though, so don't worry about those coins scattering throughout the ground. I knew when I first saw that, I was like, oh, hey, there's coins on the ground. I better go pick those up. But in reality, you just get them automatically. It's, it's just to signify the fact that you're getting money from killing enemies, which is important because we need a lot of gold in this game. And as per Dragon Quest or any RPG, really, um, you collect gold from defeating enemies. So it makes perfect sense. And there they are. There is... One of the most iconic monsters in all of video games, the slime from Dragon Quest. And uh, there's a couple of them in this encounter. They are the weakest enemy in the game, of course. They do 
They really don't do much of anything, and they're just there to be slimes, so... They're your, your basic starting enemy in every Dragon Quest game. Um, much like there are slimes in like the old uh, Dungeons & Dragons style games, there's um, slime type enemies in a lot of classic RPGs. So this is the more anime, more Akira Toriyama interpretation of slimes, and they've become iconic ever since. So, as you can see, the NP gauge below our health um, decreases whenever we um, uh, whenever we cast a spell, and then below that I think is a stamina gauge, although I really can't tell you exactly what that's for. Um, it doesn't... I never really noticed that being consumed or anything. I might have to do some more research on that. Um, but you will gradually restore MP as you walk. Alright, King Doric here is going to give us a, uh, a tonic, which is going to allow us to access... It's, he called it a Vim Stone, which is what's going to allow us to access uh, tension. So now you can see our combo counter there is purple above our, our portrait. That's going to show our, our tension increasing as our combo gets bigger, which is very important. So uh, we just reached full tension for Aurora. As you can see, her hair flies down. She's basically going like Super Saiyan mode. And uh, so a lot of really cool things happen in high tension, like this. A coup de gras. Wow, that was really powerful. Losing was never an option. Lots of other things happen when high tension as well, but I'll probably cover those a little bit later. I'm going to be leaving in most of the pre-rendered storyline cutscenes, um, but editing out some or skipping some of the dialogue between levels that's not super relevant. But I'll be trying to cover most of the story during this let's play. I'll just be very selective about it. If I am not much mistaken, this battle was but the first of many. We have rid the capital of monsters, yes. But this is no more than a temporary solution. It is but a matter of time before their allies outside the city launch another assault. Furthermore, it would be foolish to assume that the effects of this phenomenon are limited to the monsters in Arbor. Me. Okay, okay, we get it. What you're saying is, all the other towns and villages in the world may be in trouble too. Uh, Friends, I had feared as much myself. It would seem the time is indeed against us. Fear not, your majesty. I have devised the perfect strategy. First, we must head westward, through the forest, to the city of Calibur. Of we... course! Calibur! Home of mages, inventors, and workers of wonder. Surely there we might find a clue as to the troubles that assail us. Good thinking, Your Majesty. That's an amazing idea. Yes, but... Well then, what... we better get going. Me too. I'm going with you. Rah! Come, my boldest and most trusted retainers! We must sally forth without delay! 